I got a video I'm going to be starting on this AR-15. I'm going to do some multi-cam style dirt, uh, dip coating. Basically it's in this tube here. Got it right here. It's kind of a long thing. I'll kind of go through the process of the coating. The reason I'm going to do this is I used to basically have this stock on there. It was just the short Magpul CTR with the carbine set up on here. It fed alright, but I went to a rifle buffer and A2 stock on here. This is just, this isn't a factory style A2 stock. It's an aftermarket. I don't know if it's UTG or Magpul or what. This, this feels like it's plastic on the back. It still has a trap door. I'd like to get an actual GI stock, but it's not a huge deal. This is still fiberglass, so it's not bad. I had to get get everything real tight back here. But the issue with this rifle is it it kind of I got it together as a long range one just to see how it shoots, and it shoots good at 600 meters or so. But what I want to do is it kind of looks like I have like this grip on there, and that's cool and everything, but the other rifle dip coating turned out so well I kind of wanted to do this one too. And then this stainless barrel, I was just going to leave it like this as a target rifle whatever, but I'm kind of bored and want to do something else with it. So I'm going to multi-cam basically from here all the way up to here. I'm thinking about taking the barrel off and doing a Cerakote, uh, like a flat dark earth up to the muzzle brake. I'll leave the muzzle brake black with a few of the trigger parts. I'll totally strip this down. And what I'm going to start with right now is I'll probably break this apart. I'll just show you how to this. I actually have Loctite of the free flow tube. I release the lock ring on here with my brass punch. And now I'm going to heat this up and get rid of the get rid of the Loctite, soften it up so it'll actually turn off of there. So what I'm going to do right now, I got a little propane torch here. I'm going to actually pull this apart and put it on the other fixture. So then I'm just dealing with the upper receiver. I'm not hurting anything else. So I'll take this off. What do I do with it? Here it is. Let's set this down here. wider up here in the front so that's the way it's got a point where the magazine's at so I'm going to put this in the vise take the bolt and stuff like this drop it on the floor Duct tape or duct tape on here trying to keep from marring this up and now I get the rings in the way. Alright, I got that locked in there. So I can get on there and actually twist this and it won't come off. Make something to Pull that off of there. Use this t shirt. Kind of like making a makeshift tourniquet. I'll stick this in there. To avoid scratching stuff up. torch on there and keep that Loctite loosened up. Try to keep from marring up the free flow tube. It's working. Yeah. 
have it. Here's the barrel, here's the tube. I'll just hang this up here, let it cool down for a bit. This is the uh, YHM better low profile. And for the coating that I'm going to be doing, it's going to work out better that way anyway. So I will just pull this off. And when I coat this, I just take this off to do the barrel. When I coat this, I'm just going to put the gas block back down in there and then coat it where it's at. So that way the gas tube will get coated and stuff too. I can't remember if I did Loctite on that, so I might have to heat the receiver up too. I'm going to at least get this popped into the nut here. had that torque so that's good. I had to loctite that, that would have been dumb. Just gonna snug this so I can get the brake off. Also I don't mar this up, I'm gonna try to get a large large punch it kind of fits the diameter of that. I should have something or something large diameter so it doesn't mar the edge of that. This should work. I don't, I don't think this is that tight but that one's not. Let's pull the brake off. I like it. It's it's not enormous. It's kind of like a shark brake but it's just got Three vents out the side. I'm not really sure who makes it for Midway, but I like the brake. It works awesome, so I'm going to keep using it. It works good. Keep the gas tube off of here. I'm going to barrel nut. Now on this barrel nut, You can see where the Loctite got stuck up in there. Let's see if I can get the right angle. You can kind of see the Loctite stuck in the threads. Just gonna, there we go. You can see the Loctite, the crap in the threads on there. That's what you got to heat up to get it off. Um, some builders use it, some don't. Um, I use it just so it stays in place. Even the lock ring's a little stiff on here. I'll probably pull it all the way off this way. I'm um, just running a bunch of solvent on here. I'll help clean that up so you can when you go back together you can re-loctite it. Is basically it. The nut only goes on one way if anyone's wondering. But there you have it. So I got this thing stripped down. When you take this grip off, and as most of you know, hold this upside down. But be ready for the spring that holds your selector switch detent in place to come out of there. This spring right there, you can kind of see it. The screw you can find. But this spring here for your detent. See how your selector switch wants to fall out of there? Your detent's going to fall out of there too, if I can get it to fall out. This this is going to come all the way out. you got to be careful when you change your grip. Here's the screw. Story, you don't even have to take the pen all the way out, you really don't want to. Because they're kind of a pain in the ass to put back in. Spring out all at once. I'll set those over here. Don't want to lose the little parts, that's for sure. Next, um, the takedown pins are going to stay in. Pull the buffer out and spring. Keep 
keep that out of the way. Just put your uh, takedown pin and pull it out. Wiggle it. Okay, now it's together. Like that. So that's all the gut side of this for the most part. You got your roll pin up here. This Magpul trigger guard on the bottom here, I'm just going to leave that in there. That'll get coated along with the rest of this. Now my fingers are all oily, so I'm going to take and, and uh, wash that off. Get all the get some alcohol and wipe it down. Get rid of that. Um, some cleaner solvent. And that's that part. Oh, mag release button. Basically, just push that button in all the way, and you can turn that mag release lever. Usually, you want something to stick in there, like a punch. Push that in way further than it needs to be, and then you just unscrew that. Oop. There you've got the spring, the button, and I'll just temporarily screw these together too for the mag release, bolt release. Alright, there you have it. It's stripped. Just got done spraying the chassis. It's got the primer coat on there. The next process will be the dipping. I just got it all covered. I got a little tape on the end of the buttstock there where I didn't want paint to be, but that is what we have so far with all the guts and everything out of it. there it is. Next step will be the dipping and I'll show you that after that's done. So here I am going to give this coating another try. This is the uh, multicam part two. I just un unwrapped this and there's moisture getting all over everything. You gotta look out for getting moisture on your stuff. Um, I basically the other stuff didn't turn out. I had to repaint all this with a better paint. A uh, dip one, two, three had some aerosol stuff that was supposedly supposed to work. That's all primered. Along with obviously the buffer tube is going to be covered up by the A2 stock, so I'm not going to do that, but I just did, redid everything. This is the stag lower on here. And I re-primed all of that. I stripped all the old stuff off. The issue I had is the primer sucks so bad that I had everything dipped pretty good and I went to like mask off some stuff and it tore the paint, the masking tape tore that film, the ink that had already been dipped right off. It shouldn't do that. And, and they were saying if you use which was way cheaper than the one you can buy, it's just that barrel over there. And I'll get it back over there in a second. Kind of mixing uh, my project today with a little bit of beer, a little bit of soda. It's a Saturday afternoon. It's nice, about 65 degrees out, so it's not real cold. Hopefully I can get this project to turn out well. The A2 stock, which is a nice, big, flat surface, that should look really good with this multi-cam pattern because you got a nice, huge, flat surface. The rest of it, should look okay. I'll just uh, kind of show myself dipping the first one and then uh, see I got a little water here so I'm probably gonna shrink this this pattern up a tiny bit just so I don't get that part in there I might just cut that out of there completely. Um, I got the shiny side up this time there's the dull side you can see it's dull versus shiny the shiny side should be up. I didn't pay attention to that because 
normally it, it rolls open the shiny side of this. I had to roll it because I remembered the other stuff that they sent me and they rolled this up the same way. I don't know if they're not paying attention, but uh, the the dip one, two, three place or the dipstick or whatever this company is, they're out of South Carolina. And normally I deal with the Hydra Fix guy out of Montana. And a uh, Hydra Fix guy is way easier to deal with. Um, I could get into get into a little more with their shipping and everything, but I, I don't like the way they roll that up because when you unroll it, it wants to unroll itself and when you're trying to lay this down you want as little bubbles as possible underneath there because if there's bubbles in there it'll cre create voids on your dip pattern when you pull it back out of the water solution so that's kind of an issue with rolling it up upside down and before I didn't even really notice it I, I you know I got into doing it and the the dull side was up and it won't activate properly and it won't soak up the moisture right with the water and uh, it just it turned into a disaster so some dip film waste later and some different primer you live and learn I guess and I'm making this video so that no one else can make the same mistakes but if you want to have a successful dip do not use a primer and aerosol this was a huge waste of money. Huge waste. Kind of like it was a lot of money, but it's it's more time. You don't want to keep doing this dipping stuff over and over again. Because your project will eventually get ruined because you got paint and gunk and everything all over everything. So I spent some time stripping these AR parts back apart. You know, getting them back to their original black finish and and all that stuff. So yeah, this just didn't stick to the primer was the issue. This was coming off, the primer was still staying there. I didn't like that. So, okay, I guess the battery's gonna go dead, so I'll do activator on this one and dip the uh, next. Okay, I finally got this thing dipped. I got all the pieces. You can kind of see how this looks here. Kind of turn it. This is that uh, military camo too. Um, <coughs> technically, kind of like a multi-cam design. What they're going to be going to. Pull the camera off here. This is after getting it dipped and doing some touch-up dipping and stuff. You can kind of see here's the stock. The stock kind of ended up dark on this side, and then it kind of lightens up on this side. And I clear coated it with Duracoat with some uh, decent amount of hardener in there to make sure that that stuff stays on and doesn't come off. So it's got a, it'll have a really good hard coat to it, and it's not super glossy. You can see it's not like ultra shiny, which is kind of what I'm going for. I'll flip it around. And this is just the shell. When it dries a little more, I'll start putting it back together. So there's no trigger parts or anything in that yet. I think it turned out fairly decent. When I get it all together, that'll be the real, uh, real test. And then the barrel, I Cerakoted it. I sprayed it with flat dark earth Cerakote. So that's the barrel for it. It's stainless steel. So that'll be up inside there. And it kind of matches the flat dark earth. This uh, Magpul grip is kind of dirty. That's the grip I'm going to be putting on it. It's just a Magpul MOE rubberized grip. And the reason it's not multicam is because it's rubberized. The multicam camo, especially with the dirt coat and everything, won't stay on this. It'll this flexes enough and it just doesn't adhere well so I don't paint anything rubber so and a lot of the hardware parts and everything are still black so it'll add some black accents muzzle brake for the, everything is still black I did not coat the the gas block or the tube I figured that gets pretty hot pretty quick with all the hot gases going through it so 
I didn't want to be cooking off any finished premature, so I just left that stainless. So it'll be pretty tough to see it inside there. It should be pretty uh, camouflage anyway inside the free float tube. You pretty pretty much will hardly see it. So that is what I have right now, and then I'll shoot some more video of when it's uh, put all, all put together and ready to mount a scope. This is the scope I'm going to put on it. This is that Swift I have. This is kind of a a default scope. I don't recommend anyone buy a Swift, so this is what I have. See, it's a Swift on there. It's Swift Optics. It's an okay scope, but I'll go into more detail with that. But that's the uh, Burris PEPR. I might coat the scope mount, but not the actual scope. I really don't want to get into wasting a whole lot of time on that scope. I mean it works but it's not a reliable piece of equipment. Look at it that way. Alright, so here is the finished product. You can see it's all dipped, clear coated. I just threw a scope on there just to get the whole effect. Uh, it's not really the one that's going to be on there and that's okay. There's the Teflon coated barrel. The muzzle brake on there, and here's that new military style camo. I don't know if I get in trouble saying multi cam, it's really ridiculous, but whatever. Alright, let me flip it over. Lock it here. And here is the other side. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for checking out this channel. I didn't get everything in there, but I think you get the idea. And I just had it out at the range the other day. I believe Saturday. And it worked out pretty good. So, no issues.